In this video, I'll explain virtual networking concepts in vSphere. And we'll start out by looking at the very basics. How does a virtual machine actually generate network traffic? And how do we get that traffic out to our network? Well, in many ways, a virtual machine works almost exactly the same as a physical machine does. So here in our diagram, we see a Windows virtual machine. And it has a network interface card, just like any other network connected machine. The guest operating system has no idea that this is a virtual NIC. In this case, Windows just sees a network adapter. And from the operating system perspective, that's really the end of the story. So when Windows needs to send some packets to the network, it uses its virtual NIC. And what does a network interface card connect to? Well, in most cases, it connects to some sort of switch. Our virtual machines will connect to a virtual machine port group on a virtual switch. And the port group is used to define settings like VLAN membership or security policies. And if other virtual machines are connected to this port group as well, they can communicate with each other without that traffic ever leaving the ESXi host. Now, if some traffic needs to flow out to an external network device or some virtual machine on a different network, it'll have to be sent to the physical network and it'll use something called a VMNIC. A VMNIC is a physical uplink, right? This is one of the physical ports on my ESXi host and it acts as an uplink for the virtual switch. So just a quick review of some of the terminology we see here, a VNIC is a virtual network interface card on a virtual machine. Our VMs connect to a virtual machine port group. And if the traffic needs to hit the external physical network, a VMNIC or physical adapter is used. Now those virtual machine port groups that we just looked at are for virtual machine traffic only. If it's any other type of traffic, everything else is handled by a VM kernel port. A VM kernel port is a special type of port that you create on your vSphere standard or distributed switches that has its own IP address. It's sort of like a little entity into itself. So our virtual machine port groups are like ports on a physical switch that a PC would connect to. A VM kernel port is special though. It's used for traffic like vMotion, IP storage, fault tolerance, vSAN, and management. So these are the ports that the hosts and vCenter use to talk amongst themselves and carry out tasks. Now another option for our virtual machine port groups is VLAN designation. So in this case, we have two virtual machines and each of them are connecting to a different port group. And the VM on the top connects to the prod port group and it has VLAN 10 assigned. And the VM on the bottom connects to the dev port group, which has VLAN 20 assigned. And then we can see the standard switch connects to our physical network over something called a trunk port. Just think of a trunk port as any physical port or group of ports that can carry multiple VLANs over a single physical connection. So because we've identified the VLANs on the individual port groups, we're using a VLAN tagging method called virtual guest tagging. So in our diagram here, the top virtual machine is connected to the prod VLAN. The bottom virtual machine is connected to the dev VLAN. And as traffic flows out of those VMs and hits those particular port groups, if that traffic is bound for the external physical network, it's the job of the virtual switch to append a header, a VLAN header. This is called a VLAN tag, so that when that traffic arrives on the actual physical switch, it'll arrive on the appropriate VLAN, and we can maintain that VLAN segmentation throughout the physical network. Another important thing we need to configure in our vSphere standard switches is the maximum transmission unit. So let's take a look at how an improperly configured MTU can have a negative impact. 
So here we see a virtual machine that's going to send a jumbo frame. These are larger frames than normal. And the purpose of jumbo frames is to allow the virtual machine to essentially send fewer frames. The less frames we have to generate, the less addressing that needs to be done, and the less overhead that's incurred. So jumbo frames can be really beneficial from a performance standpoint. So let's say that our virtual machine sends out this jumbo frame and it arrives at the virtual switch. And the virtual switch has been configured with the appropriate MTU of 9000 and the virtual switch can easily support this large jumbo frame. And this frame maybe is bound for something on the physical network. So it flows out of one of our VM NICs towards the physical switch. And in this case, the physical switch is configured for an MTU of 1524. So this frame is too big to comply with the configured MTU of the physical switch. So the physical switch is going to have to break this frame up into smaller chunks and individually address each of those smaller frames. This is called fragmentation and reassembly. And it has a really significant performance impact on the physical switch in this case, because the CPU of the physical switch is going to be working very hard to break up those jumbo frames and create smaller frames. So in review, in this lesson, we learned that virtual machines can connect to network resources using a vSphere standard switch, and that our virtual NIC or vNIC is essentially going to trick the guest operating system into thinking it has a true physical network interface card. We also learned that virtual machine port groups are used to connect to our virtual machines and that they carry only VM traffic. Our virtual machine port groups are assigned VLANs and we can also create security policies on them as well. All of our other types of traffic like management, storage, and vMotion will flow over VM kernel ports. Jumbo frame support needs to be configured identically on our virtual switches and our physical switches. Otherwise, we end up with our problem of fragmentation and reassembly.